Good morning. How good it is to be back among you, to be together in the beauty of this place. Oh, so nice to be here. Oh, what a warm welcome. Well, I hope each of you also feel a warm welcome. If I could do a round of applause for you, I would as well. Um, <laughs> but it is always good to be in the beauty of this place, um, in the beauty of our time shared in worship with one another. I trust that all of you know, and if you don't, please be reminded that no matter who you are, and no matter where you are on life's journey, it is our deep desire to meet you where you are and to most importantly, share God's love with you. So welcome. If this is your first time visiting with us here at St. John's and you're interested in sharing more about yourself with us or learning more about us from us, please take a moment to fill out a card that is found on either end of your pew. There's a basket on the, in the back right near Jerry. Um, on your way out, please place this card in that basket so that we can be in touch. And please feel welcome. As always, it would not be a Sunday in October without announcements aplenty to share with all of you this morning. So um, lots coming up in the weeks ahead to stay, pay attention to, but let me uh, remind you of just a few of them. Today, the 23rd, is our deadline for both addresses of college students and also the donations that you might have signed up to share. Any donations for college goodie boxes can go on the table on the other side of this wall here in the library. And any addresses for college students in your life uh, who you want to get a goodie box can be shared with me or with Bonnie Weber via email. Uh, we are having our annual blessing of the animals happening on November 6th. So that's not next Sunday, but the Sunday after. That's happening at 1215, so you've got a little bit of time after our second service to go home and retrieve your furry friend and bring them back to the meditation garden area so that we can have a blessing of the animals. Um, in the narthex, you may have noticed that the carryout connection table is empty, which is a good thing. That means that all of the bags for October have been claimed um, and children are at home weekly doing their lessons. There will be uh, a new batch on November 6th, which is also the day that we will have our monthly in-person Sunday school gathering from 9 to 10. So please, um, if you have young ones, join us for that downstairs in the activity room. And November 6th, you'll also see that that table will be filled with November's bags to take home. Let's see, what else do we have here? There are two important announcements, I believe, in your bulletins. One of them is about meetings with Pastor Dale, which have been ongoing and will continue on Wednesday evenings and on Sunday mornings. Um, signing up for those meetings in the narthex or the elevator lobby is super helpful for planning purposes. That being said, if you find yourself free on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday evening and you stop by, you will not be turned away. Um, so please make yourself available to that so that we can, um, so that we can uh, continue to be in this time of transition and to learn more about Dale and he can learn more about us. Also in your bulletin is a reminder about our 2023 calendar, so please pay attention to that. And one last reminder for our covenant commitment cards, which all of you should have in hand. There's also some back where you grabbed your bulletins and over here. Um, this bowl on the communion table will be here until November 13th when these are dedicated um, and offered up. So um, drop them by, drop them in there whenever you have a chance. This is helpful for us as we create our budget and as we lift up our commitments to St. John's. All right, I believe those are all of the announcements for this morning, so I'm going to invite you to join me in taking a deep and slow and very intentional breath as we breathe in God's spirit, as we exhale and feel ourselves relaxing, becoming present in this time and in this place, and as we just take a moment to prepare ourselves before entering into worship this morning. Our psalm this morning that we will read in just a bit speaks of the loveliness of God's dwelling place. Now for many of us, this space 
is one in which God dwells. This time set apart each Sunday morning is something that our soul longs for. Now, we've been talking a lot about the journey lately, our life journey, our faith journey, our journey together as fellow travelers on the road. But an essential part of any journey moving forward is learning to stand still. You cannot journey if you do not rest, if you do not breathe, if you do not take time to renew. So today, as we gather to pray, to sing, to learn, to be, how good it will be, how good it is to dwell, to come home, to settle into God's presence that fills this place and fills each one of us. May it be so as we gather to worship as beloved community in the name of God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you join with me as we confess our sins? Sustaining God of light and love, sometimes our pride and arrogance get the best of us. We are prone to think we know what is best and who is best. We are often forming our own responses to others instead of listening with an open heart and open mind. We fall in seeking to understand and instead jump to wanting to be understood. Patient God, remind us that listening is a powerful gift, one that helps us connect to the humanity in others. Continue to mold us into a people patient enough to reflect, open enough to ponder, and secure enough to love those who are on different paths while on life's journey. We pray for your holy guidance as we continue to serve you and the world you so love.
Yes, our God is a God who listens, listens to your heart. You and I are called not to become perfect, but to make progress. And so when we confess, we join that journey towards progress, towards wholeness, towards freedom, toward becoming holy and fully alive. So people of God, know you are forgiven. That is the good news. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning, one that I spoke of earlier, is from Psalm 84, verses 1 through 7. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. And our gospel reading this morning is from Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people. I, like thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector, I fast once a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. All right, all of my children, come forward. I have something special to share with you this morning. Andy is first in line. I love it. Who did you bring with you? Ella. Perfect. Nice. All right. Here comes Izzy. We've got Gwen and Carolyn and Rosie. Got my girl gang up here. I love it. Okay, well... Your dress is giving away kind of what I want to talk about today. I don't know if you can see the dress that I'm talking about, but it has candy corn on it, which is awesome, right? We're, so how many of you will be going trick-or-treating? Are you going to go trick-or-treating? Yes. She's like, yeah, I am. Okay, well, I've got two, like, bag situations here for trick-or-treating because whenever you go trick-or-treating, you need a bag to collect all your candy in. So we have this bag of candy. And then we've got this bag of candy. Now, I'm going to give this bag of candy to Rosie, just, just to play along, and I'm going to give this bag of candy to Carolyn. All right, so Rosie, is your bag of candy full? Yes, right? It's full. It's, it's a Ziploc bag, and it's full of candy. It smells like chocolate. Mm. Now, Carolyn, is your bag of candy full? No. Her bag of candy isn't full, but this bag of candy is pretty full. Now, what if you guys were trick-or-treating and Rosie spent all of her time talking about how full her bag was? What if you were like, ha-ha, my bag of candy is full? And now Carolyn would say, 
well, my bag's not very full. But what, which bag would you choose if you could choose a bag to go trick-or-treating in? The orange one, right? Why would you choose that bag? Because you could fit more candy in it, right? Right, that one's full. There's as much as it could hold. So even though you, while you were spending time talking about how full your bag was, Carolyn was over here getting more candy, right? Yeah, we would all choose this bigger bag because there's room to grow, right? Room to grow. And that's kind of what I want to talk about this morning because in our gospel reading, there are two men... And there's one person who goes around talking about how full his bag is, right? How great he is, how much better he is than everyone else. He prays more. Um, he loves God more. He, he's just, he's really talking himself up. And then the other person, he spends his time asking God for help and saying, you know what? I've got room to grow, right? There's a lot more that I could be doing. I could be praying more. I could be loving God more. I could be doing a lot of things differently. I could be helping more people. And, and God, now the interesting thing about God, God likes when we've got room to grow, right? And, and we use this word, and Pastor Dale's going to use it too, this word called humble, which is kind of a big word, and we don't use it a whole lot. But I like to think of the word humble meaning that we have room to grow and that we say, hey, you know what? I don't know everything. Do you know everything? No, we don't know everything. We don't do everything perfectly, just like Pastor Dale said. We don't do everything perfectly. We certainly have room to grow. Now, the really cool thing about God and about Jesus is that when Jesus looks inside of our hearts, no matter who you are, whether or not you spend your time talking about how full your bag is or whether or not you've, you've got some room to grow, God looks inside of us and sees the same thing. And you know what? There is the exact same candy in that bag as there is in this bag. And God looks inside each of our hearts and says, I see the same thing. We are all beloved children of God. And God loves all of us the same. And that's the really beautiful part. But there is always this reminder that God wants us to leave some space to grow so that we can learn from other people, that we can learn more about God, and that we never get to the point where we're saying, we're better than anybody else, right? So as we trick or treat, I know you're going to share your candy, so I'm not worried about that. As we go about our lives, as we continue to follow God, as we learn more about Jesus, always a good reminder to keep some room to grow. So Rosie, I'm going to have you open your bag and empty it into this bag. And I'm going to put this bag up on the steps here. And after, I'll take that. And after the service, with the parent's permission, you can come up and grab a piece of candy, okay? So I'm going to hang it up there. I don't want the responsibility of doing that right now. You know, that makes me nervous. But um, I will hang it right on the steps and you guys can come up forward with a parent and grab one, okay? Well, let's take time to pray together. And then we will join in saying our Lord's Prayer, okay? Oh, God, we are so grateful for another day, another Sunday to come together and to be here in worship with one another. Help us to remember, oh, God, that being humble means having room to grow, having room to learn, having room to know the things that we just don't know. And help us to not compare ourselves to others and think that we're better than everyone else, but to be reminded that when you look inside of our hearts, every single person is a beloved child of you. Be with us as we go about the rest of our week. Keep us safe and keep us finding you in unexpected places and in unexpected ways. All of these things we pray in the name of Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you all so much for being up front with me. Head back to your seats and remember afterwards you can get a special treat.
Good morning, church. What a beautiful piece of music. Touching on this theme of journey and this theme of humility. We live in a culture which puts an enormous focus on self. Self achievement, self esteem, self worth, self actualization. It's hard to be humble with so much focus on self. It's not that focus on self in and of itself is a bad thing. We shouldn't take the stance of self-abasement or submissiveness or self-effacement. However, an overabundance of focus on self somehow distorts our rightful place within the communities we live, function, and find ourselves. Understanding our rightful place, the place where we neither elevate ourselves for the sake of facade, nor diminish ourselves for the sake of diminishment, to find that place that's just right is humility. The word humility comes from the word humus, not to be confused with the word hummus. <laughs> hummus consists of chickpeas, <laughs> olive oil, and paprika, and maybe some other things maybe pine nuts. Humus, on the other hand, is all that decaying matter that ends up on the ground and it over time forms to create soil. The word human has the same root as humus. So when you think of humility, I want you to think of this Latin word for earth or soil. Humus. God breathed life into Adam from the dust of the ground, from the humus. And we know that when we die, we return to that ground, that earth. This morning's gospel lesson from Luke is one in which Jesus offers a parable on prayer. And it suggests that prayer is an act of humility. What is humility, anyway? Here's one way to think about it. Several years ago, I was introduced to this concept called the Jahari window. Now, I want you to think of a window 
Like think of an old fashioned window with four panes of glass. This top left window pane represents the things that you know about yourself and other people know about you. So I know I'm a pastor and you know that I'm a pastor. That's window pane number one. There's a second window pane just to the right. This represents the things that people know about me that I may not know about me. (laughs) I can give you an example. (laughs) Sometimes when I get anxious, my speech speeds up, and I don't realize it, but other people do. You see, with this second pain, we realize that you and I have blind spots, things that we cannot see about ourselves that other people can. And to the degree that you and I are curious, open and humble, we can hear those things without getting defensive. Now sometimes people do want to tell us something about ourselves, but we don't want to hear it. Okay, so now there's window pane number three down here at the bottom on the left. These are the things that we know about ourselves that we never want anyone else to know. There are secrets. And then there's this final window pane down in the lower right-hand corner. These are the things that we do not know about ourselves and others do not know about us. These are probably the things God knows about us. So you and I are not all knowing, are we? We do have limits on our self-knowledge. And humility is understanding that we don't know what we don't know. We come to God not arrogant or self-righteous, but instead we come to God seeking to become more and more ourselves. We yearn to be at home with our true self. One of the things we do from the time that we are born is that we become curious. And one of the things I love about little babies is how curious they are. Curiosity starts at birth, and it is the engine that is with us for our lives. We look, we listen, we ask. What if our prayers, what if my prayers, what if your prayers were offered as curious questions to God? And maybe those questions to God will not get an immediate response. Maybe 
we have to live with those questions, carry those questions, even argue with God about those questions. Now that's a very different way, that's a very different way of being than the Pharisee in today's gospel reading who was not curious, but self-serving. In his prayer, he wanted God to know that he was better than the other people. He wanted to show himself as superior. I love what the text says. He was standing alone. Jesus' parable also characterizes this other person, this tax collector. Bad thing in the Roman world to be a tax collector. Persona non grata. But this tax collector is begging God for mercy. The contrast between these two individuals is stark. One man is self-congratulating. The other feels his utter dependency on God. He wants to return to his true self. As people of faith, we have to be careful about our faith swerving into the dangerous lane of self-righteousness and arrogance. Peter Weiner, he's a senior fellow at the Ethics and Public Policy Center. And Mr. Weiner served the Reagan administration. He served in both Bush administrations. He is also a contributor to the New York Times, and he writes about this thing called moral humility. I love it. Moral humility. He writes, and I want to quote, since humility is so out of fashion as to almost have been forgotten, it's worth making the case for how to rightly understand it, to articulate why humility is not only an ascension, essential Christian value, but also an essential civic one. He writes, my own understanding of humility is inextricably tied to a decades-long journey of faith. From it, I have become convinced that Christians should be characterized by moral humility. This doesn't mean Followers of Jesus should be indifferent to a moral order grounded in eternal truths or unable to judge some things right and others wrong. But they ought to be alert, first and foremost, to their own shortcomings, to the awareness of how wayward our hearts are, how even good acts are often tainted by selfish motives, how we all struggle with brokenness in our lives. And then he writes this. This is not an argument for self-loathing. This is an argument for self-awareness. This is not an argument for self-loathing. It's an argument for self-awareness. Of the many, many things 
that you do as a person of faith. One of the things that we do as Christians is practice self-awareness. Sometimes we need other people to help us with that. There is a quiet confidence that comes with true humility. You can be clear about your beliefs. And at the same time, you can be open, honest, and kind to people around you. Humility does not mean you are milk toast. It does mean that you understand that as human beings, we all have frailties and failings. And despite those, we still choose dignity, compassion, and empathy, as opposed to hate and contempt. I think that's good news. Amen. Please be seated. As we move into our time of prayer this morning, I'd like to lift up a few joys and concerns that have been shared in our book throughout the week. Our joys, both Jean McKinstry Rogers and Linda Camburn, both celebrated birthdays on Friday, October 21st, so we celebrate with Jean and with Linda. And two concerns to lift up. Yesterday, we celebrated the life of Luella Trout, who was a longtime member of St. John's, um, but we continue to keep her loved ones and family in our prayers in the days moving forward. 
Jean Roshong has asked us to pray for her great-grandson, Hayden Burns, who is in the hospital battling RSV and now COVID. Um, and I know of many little ones and parents who are facing this respiratory virus that's going around for children. So we keep Hayden and um, parents and little ones in our prayers as well. Bearing in mind that we all come to a time of prayer with many joys and concerns and names and faces and situations on our hearts and minds, I invite you to bring those to mind now so that we might lift them up to God together. Let us pray. God, we long to know that you see us, that you hear our calls, that you dwell around us and among us and within us. We pray for healing, for restoration, for wholeness within individuals and communities. We pray for empathy and compassion and tolerance to flood every corner of our world. Wherever there is exploitation, wherever there is neglect, dwell in these places, O oh God. Wherever the needs of the voiceless and the choiceless are ignored, Wherever there is hatred, contempt, comparison, self-righteousness, wherever there is violence, dwell in these places, O oh God. Wherever the gifts of difference and dignity are rejected, wherever people are tempted to think of themselves as better than others, more worthy, more deserving, more important to you, dwell in these places, O oh God. We pray that your humility might break in and challenge us, reminding each of us of our own sense of need, our own sense of humanity, challenging us to remain open and teachable, and teaching us to serve and to love everyone with the same grace you have showed us. God, remind us that we are not alone, that you are with us and that we have a responsibility to be with one another, whether sick or grieving or struggling to move forward for whatever reason, or in the midst of joyful moments, in times of celebration and busyness and excitement. We come this morning, O oh God, bearing our own joys and concerns and lifting up those that have been shared among us. We surround Jean and Linda with our prayers of joy and celebration this day. We give thanks for their lives and for who they are among us. And God, we ask that you surround Hayden with your healing presence. Be with his family, his parents, his doctors and his nurses. Be with all those who are in the hospital waiting for things to turn waiting for healing, waiting to feel better. God, we ask that you be with Luella's family as they continue to celebrate and remember her life. Be with all who grieve and mourn this day. And now, O oh God, we take time to pray silently the prayers of our hearts. Hear our prayers, O oh God, and be with all those for whom we pray. Make us humble in our love for one another and in our pursuit of you. All of these things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. As we switch gears and move into our time of offering, hopefully you had a chance to place your offering in the plates as you entered 
um, either door. If you didn't get a chance to do that, please feel welcome to come up after the service and to place them in the plates once they are already up front. They will be blessed all the same. But now I invite you to stand as we join in singing our doxology as our offering is brought forward and we dedicate it to God. Oh, gracious God, there is a wideness in your mercy. There is a wideness in your love. There is a wideness in your generosity. Thank you for giving us that generosity. The privilege of becoming one with you as you heal and restore your world. Bless these gifts in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray it, amen. As you go from this place, be a strong people. Be a committed people. Be a humble people. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may God give you peace today, tomorrow and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.